All right, guys, this is uh, a paper that we went over in my uh, Kinesiology 399 uh, class. And the students asked to go over it again, so I thought I'd just go ahead and record it and, and help you guys out if you're interested in this sort of thing uh, and post it on YouTube. Uh, this is the load that maximizes the average mechanical power output during jump squats and power-trained athletes. Um, the authors, Daniel Baker, uh, Stephen, Moore, uh, Stephen Nance, and Michael Moore. And, uh, Dan Baker is a good friend of mine, uh, as you know, over the years, as most people, you know, you, you're in a field long enough, you uh, work your way up, and the circle gets smaller and smaller. Uh, Dan Baker is, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I really like him is he's another person who is a practitioner and PhD, so he doesn't go too far either way. What I mean by that is that everything's applicable. Uh, because everything that he's looked at is what they did in their training. Now, about the study, come on, this paper incorporated three separate studies, uh, and we'll go over those individually uh, here momentarily, because the population was a little bit different, but they all found very, very similar things. Study one, they used 32 professional and semi-professional rugby league players with a mean, uh, you know, so we look at their age, 22.4 years, uh, plus or minus 3.8, uh, 181 centimeters and 91.7 kilos, uh, respectively participated in this study. So these are older-ish uh, athletes. Uh, they are professionals. They are you know, Brisbane Broncos and then whoever the semi-professionals were. Uh, knowing Dan, I'm assuming that's, uh, that's who we looked at. Uh, and study two, uh, 24 college-age rug rugby league players with the, uh, with the mean standard deviation, et cetera, uh, 18 years old. So this was their first year coming into the rugby system there and to the, the rugby club. 181 centimeters and 91.4 kilos. Uh, so, and then the third study was 17 professional guys, uh, just the Brisbane Broncos. I would, uh, again, I would assume they're older, 24 years of age, height, still around 181 centimeter and, uh, 93.4 kilos. They're, they're slightly heavier. So everybody did the same thing in the study. Now, uh, all subjects were in current training which entailed the full squat exercise and explosive squat jump squat exercise for a period of at least two months in the training before the uh, training cycle before testing. So they had eight weeks of doing those exercises minimum. However, that's for study two. So that's the minimum. Uh, remember, that was the college age. So this is wherever the guys just came in uh, to their, their program in Brisbane. Uh, the study, the subjects in study one and study three have been performing these exercises regularly for at least one year <clears throat> because they had been a part of the program and the team for quite some time. Now, the training, the full squat was selected to provide data pertinent to the maximum strength throughout the full range of motion of the, the muscles involved. So their squat, they went full depth. Now, if you only read the abstract, you're going to miss something. The jump squat was to a self-selected depth, and it was about a quarter squat, and that's going to be important as we move through. And Dan uh, referred, talks about this in the, uh, the discussion as well. Uh, in study one, they use the, I'm thinking this is the Brisky or uh, Brisky equation, uh, where they, they lo looked at the 3RM and converted to a 1RM which is fine. It's, it's perfectly uh, acceptable and shoot. Sometimes uh, for athletes who get scared of larger weights, this is actually a more accurate way to see what is their capacity and their capability. Two and three, they just looked at the 1RM uh, and they did, did a direct test for the 1RM rather than an estimation through an equation. Now we have the results of these three different studies. So they look at about they're all between 55 and 60% of 1RM, uh, which is the top end for power. Uh, and this is, they did the, the load of the jump squat with a percent of the full squat. Now realize that this jump squat was taken from a different depth than the full squat. Now, 
you'll see in a lot of areas of the literature where they would say, you know, 30% of the uh, squat 1RM is where peak power is achieved, but we see that it's so different here, nearly double that. Now, why? Why is it nearly double that load? Well, the range of motion is different. So they were, since they were only going down a quarter to half the distance of the full squat, they were able to achieve, uh, uh, utilize a heavier and heavier load to hit pull, uh, peak power. Because let's face it, somebody is going to be able to quarter squat far greater than what they're going to be able to full squat. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, now, we do know that for the quarter squat jump, that they would be at these percentages somewhere between 55 and 60% for pro rugby athletes of their 1RM for quarter squat jump from a full squat 1RM. And that's important to know too, uh, because we this is great because what if a coach uh, does full squats and they want to jump squat with a self-selected depth where the guys usually go quarter? Well, this is the percent of 1RM that they should be using. <clears throat> if they are trying to elicit the peak power, well from a full squat jump, then they would need to go down to the 30%. So this is just one of those areas where uh, there, there's nothing wrong with the study. It's, it's completely well done. And what I really respect about Dan uh, in, in doing this is that he just straight up said, hey, look, we did it this way. If we did a full squat, it probably would have been around the 30%. But we didn't. This is how we did the jump squat. And uh, so that's just giving you further insight into it. So that's it for this study. Uh, hopefully you got something from it. Uh, if you like this information and you want to see more like it, then let's go ahead and come visit us at the U. Uh, we've got undergraduate programs in exercise science, you know, kinesiology and sports sciences. We have got a master's program in kinesiology, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, uh, applied exercise physiology uh, with a strength and conditioning emphasis. You know, we've got a tremendous faculty down here. Uh, we've got Joe Signorelli, Brian Biagioli, Motaz El Tuki, Kevin Jacobs, Arlette Perry. The list goes on and on and on. These people who are uh, just absolute superstars in their in their region of uh, research and uh, academics and education. <clears throat> we also, to try and serve the profession better, we are doing some online coaches education courses that should go live in January now. Uh, there's no sense in starting the process now whenever we, it wouldn't get posted before the uh, nobody would be able to complete it before the continuing education unit uh, period ran out. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll have an eight week general strength and conditioning certificate uh, as well as uh, soon sometime in 2021. We'll have a almost a choose your own adventure course up for being able to pick different topics and, and adding them in. So hopefully you got something from this. I'd love to see you at the U. Uh, if you have more questions on this study or other related uh, uh, to the academic things that we talked about, you can reach out to me several ways. Um, B-M-A-N-N at Miami.edu is my email. Uh, and then I'm J. Brian Mann, and that's Brian with a Y on uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, uh, Facebook, I'm on there as well, but... Uh, Quite frankly, I'm getting close to the, the limit on friends. So if you need any, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And thanks for taking the time to watch this video.